computer. Good to you everyone, so in this topic, we will explore here the World Wide Web. In this topic, we will define what the internet is, we will state the importance of the World Wide Web, we will also access the World Wide Web efficiently, we will describe how the World Wide Web works, and we will identify the different web technologies. Now, the internet has greatly developed over the past decade. It is present in all spheres of life. The key to success of the internet is the wealth of information it offers. Millions of people worldwide use the internet to communicate and exchange information and to be connected across the world almost instantly. Moreover, the internet is also used for research, education, and entertainment. Now, here's the question. Have you ever wondered how the internet works? Because based on the quotes of Bill Gates, he said that the internet is becoming the town square for the global village of tomorrow. So let's have now the history of the internet. The creation of the internet is independent or dependent on mankind's earlier innovation. On 1836, the telegraph was invented by Cook and Whitstone. It was a revolutionized human telecommunication. The use in telegraph was the Morse code. Morse code is a series of dots and dashes used to communicate between humans. This is similar to how computers communicate via binary, which is the 1 and 0. Then on 1858 to 1866, the transatlantic cable was invented. It allows directly instantaneous communication across the Atlantic. Today, cables connect all continents and are still a main hub of telecommunications. Then, 1876, the telephone was invented by Alexander Graham Bell. The telephone exchanges provides the backbone of internet connections today. And then the modern provide digital to audio conversion to allow computers to connect over the telephone network. This is the example of telephone on the late 18th century. Then let's proceed with the political events. During the 1940s to 1980s, we have the U.S. versus Soviet Cold War. Then 1957, the USSR launches Sputnik. The U.S. forms the Advanced Research Projects Agency, which is the ARPA within the Department of Defense to build U.S. skills in computer technology. Then the, that, that's the start of the global telecommunication satellites play an important role in transmitting all sorts of data today. Then, the study of ARPANET began, or the study of ARPANET team. 1969, the ARPANET Commission by Department of Defense for Research into Networking. Their team included the following, we have the Bob Taylor, he is a psychoacoustician. He was the director of the Computer Research Program of the Department of Defense, Advanced Research Projects Agency in 1966, when he hit upon the idea of lining computers together. He was awarded $1 million to develop the network. Same as Larry Roberts, he is also a pioneer in computer networking at MIT's Lincoln's laboratory. He designed the original four-node network which was to be based on packet switching as opposed to circuit switching. Now, we have the story of the ARPANET, the nodes. The four nodes and a test was developed or was launched during 1969. The first node was launched in the University of California in Los Angeles. Soon after, we had the Stanford Research Institute, the SRI, and the University of California at Santa Barbara and the University of Utah. Then, to connect these four computers, each with its own language, Vascular suggested to Larry Roberts that four small computers that spoke the same language be constructed and connected together. Those small computers were called information message processors. And the Honeywell 516 mini computer with 12K of memory developed by both Beranek and Newman Incorporation. The 1973, the global networking becomes a reality. The first international connections to the ARPANET, the University College of London, and the Royal Radar establishment in England and in Norway. Then 1974, the packets become mode of transfer. The transmission control program specified. The packet network intercommunication, the basis of internet communication. Then on 1976, the networking comes to many. Then Queen Elizabeth sends her first email to the ARPANET. Then 1982, 
The TCP and the Internet Protocol defines future communication. The DCA and the ARPA establishes the Transmission Control Protocol and Internet Protocol as the protocol suit commonly known as TCP or IP for the ARPANET. Then, 1983, the internet gets larger, the name server developed which is the domain name. Then there is such a large number of nodes that it's hard to remember exact paths. Then, 1985, the National Science Foundation or the NSF funded the construction of ARPANET's biggest upgrade. The NSFNet, a command hub of 5 supercomputers that serves as the highways for all data traffic. Then, 1990, Tim Berners-Lee invented the HTML. It is a text browser and graphical user interface browser, or the GUI. He also established the first successful communication between an HTTP client and a server via the internet. The 1991, friendly user interface to internet established. 1992, the multimedia changes the face of the internet. Number of hosts breaks 1 million. News groups is 4,000. The term surfing the internet is coined by Jean Armour Pauly. The 1994, a new world of e-commerce was born through Amazon by Jeff Bezos. The 1995, the National Science Foundation sees founding the internet and leaving it a completely self-sustaining industry. The Sun Microsystems first released the most popular internet programming language today, which is Java. Then, 1998, the Google opened its first office. Then, 2004 to 2005, the social media revolution began when Facebook was launched in December 2004, then followed by YouTube, which debuted the following year. Then, 2006, cloud computing was introduced by Google's CEO, Eric Smith. The cloud become, became another synonym for the internet soon thereafter. Then 2007, the internet is on the go through wireless connections. Mobile and smartphone technologies went commercial and grew rapidly. Then, in our present day, the internet will become like electricity. Less visible yet more deeply embedded in people's life for good and ill. According to Jan Anderson and Lee Riney. Now, more people have access to the internet and have it flow through their lives. Mobile, wearable, and embedded computing are now tied together in the Internet of Things. Internet is widely used today by people to get connected through online social media, online chats, online forums, and video conferencing. So that's the history of the internet or the birth of the internet. Now, let's proceed with the World Wide Web. The World Wide Web or Web or WWW is an information space where a collection of interlinked web pages can be accessed via the internet. WWW allows millions of web pages to be accessed instantly with the click of a button. Now, these web pages can include text, colors, sounds, pictures, and videos. The web has three fundamental technologies that serves as its foundation, we have the Hypertext Markup Language or the HTML and the Hypertext Transfer Protocol or the HTTP and the last one which is the Uniform Resource Locator or the URL. Let's have first the Hypertext Markup Language. HTML, it is the markup or formatting language used to create pages on the web. HTML5 is the fifth and latest version of the HTML standard. Next is the Hypertext Transfer Protocol. It is a communications protocol that is used to send and receive web pages and files on the internet and the foundation of data communications for the World Wide Web. And the last foundation is the URL or the Uniform Resource Locator. This is a kind of web address that is unique and is used to identify resources on the web. The URL can be found in the address bar at the top of the web page. Now, URL consists of three parts. We have the protocol, the domain name, and the resource ID. The site in our presentation is, a, is an example of a URL. Now, this is the first part. This is the protocol part of the URL, the domain name, and the resource ID. Let's have first the protocol. The protocol instructs how a web browser should communicate with a web server when sending or fetching a web page. Next one is the domain name. The domain name identifies the organization that is directly responsible for the information. It is the web page that you are searching. 
The last one is the resource ID. The resource ID is the name of the file for the page and any directories or subdirectories under which is stored on a specified computer. So that's our topic for today about the history and the World Wide Web. So in this lesson, you have learned that the internet offers a wealth of information. The information over the internet can be searched through the World Wide Web, which comes in the form of a web page. The web offers several information and services, the reason why a lot of people often use it. Timeliness, availability, and interactivity of information, this and more are only a few of the benefits for using the World Wide Web. Some people use the web as a vehicle for faster communication. Others use it for research, product promotion, and other services. So I hope that you have learned something from today's discussion. See you on our next topic. Goodbye and God bless.